What's up, everyone? I have Nicole here. Say hi. Hi. Le- yesterday on the podcast, Tony and I do a coach recorder, which actually probably comes out today. Today's Friday. I might not release this till Saturday. I'm talking fast. I'm sorry. But the question came up about feeling the low back more than the hamstrings and glutes in RDLs or stiff like deadlifts. Nicole, I'm going to have her turn this out real quick. Nicole actually lives kind of in that anterior tilt region there. So not saying she does this, but she might have experienced this as well. This is where it's most common. So what we're going to do to make sure that you can feel the hamstrings and glutes in the RDL, that you're actually hinging at the hip and not arching at the back. So there's a difference. Arching at the back versus hinging at the hip. I'm going to have her put on the hip circle because what the hip circle is going to force her to do is spread. She's automatically going to turn those glutes on and spread as she does the RDL. So she's going to put the hip circle on and spread the hips back there to make sure she's using glutes and hamstrings and not arching into the movement. So she's going to demonstrate for me. Oh, we're good. We're going off on. Very serious. Very serious. <laughs> but I'm going to give you two, two ways to work on this so you can feel your hamstrings more than your low back. So go ahead and just give me a basic RDL. Right away, by having to pull that apart, she's no longer arched in her lumbar. She's now neutral. So she's going to RDL that. If you want to come to this out real quick, Riley, you'll be able to see that. So because she already lives in extension, this little trick of putting on the hip circle has forced her now to be more neutral when she's doing this motion. Go ahead and take that down. It's perfect for you. Thank you. The second thing we're going to do is we can make this a split stance RDL. Now, if you do a split stance RDL and you're having the same problem, you're feeling low back, we're going to work on hip extension. I got my friend the wall here and that's all I got to do. I'm going to have Nicole do it, Nicole do it as well, but just press back against the wall. So now we've got split stance, they're separated and I'm actively pushing back against the wall. And as I do that, I'm going to force my hips back because I'm pressing against the wall. So I'm actively pushing back into the wall and coming up, actively pushing back into the wall and coming back up. That is all hamstring and glute and it's single leg work. So wonderful. Give it a shot and you let me know how it feels. Oh, I will. Shout out to Taylor McClecky, doctor of DPT. He taught me this, it's a really great move. So you're gonna push back into the wall hard with the back foot. And you notice she's neutral again here. She's getting a great range and she's elongating the down hamstring. So she's getting a dynamic stretch and a great contraction without going into the lumbar spine too much. It's only isometrically holding at neutral. How does that feel? Hard. (laughs) Harder than it looks. Yes. Perfect. So two variations. If you tend to over arch or extend when you do your deadlifts or you do your RDLs or you do your walls, hip circle on so you spread and hip extend, hip hinge, sorry, or Use the wall. This also serves as a great warm up. If you have dormant hamstrings and glutes before you squat, you can get them firing real quick, but you're doing this with your body weight, and it's a great dynamic mobility drill to get you going before you do any squats or deadlifts. All right? Thank you.